be without fear is in the now I'm learning how now I'm learning how fast like no thanks no I so I want to really really thank you for being here um, amidst all these challenges that we are um, faced with um, these days and um, and I really am so appreciative and grateful to be able to to do this I mean this is actually perfect you know because everybody is kind of available and um, why not use this platform whatever platform we have to give voice to everyone right and and to all the small businesses and uh, and 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 brand ourselves in this way and help each other you know um, grow and at least not completely disappear under stress and uh, so again thank you so much i really want to again share my gratitude for you guys to take your time to be here it really means a lot a lot to me um, and i know it's challenging a lot of people may have uh, lost their jobs or have uncertain future they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and uh, some of you may be at home with your kids and have to uh, run around them cook for them while doing your job and everything else but you took the time to be here so i really appreciate it but I really, really also firmly believe that um, um, when there's a, in the face of adversity and challenge, there's always an opportunity to, to raise above it and do something great. And so um, I'm really positive that once we get past this thing, you know, um, there will be changes and we can really use this opportunity to maybe reevaluate everything ourselves or start asking new questions, um, start looking at things from a different angle and maybe just uh, start thinking new and creative ways because we have no choice, right? We, we are faced with something. Everything is online now. We can't see each other in person, but we can create communities and create um, greatness and, and, and wellness amongst each other. So I think this is uh, something really powerful. And I think a lot of us now have used this time to, uh, to do things that are different than what they're used to. I, uh, the past two or three years, I really promised myself to do things that really challenge me and scare me. And so this was a time like, you know what, excuse my language, fuck it, but I have no other excuse. I have to be on a webinar, even though I hate looking at myself right now, but you know, put the vanity aside and then just try to use this platform to do something great and also challenge myself to do something new. Um, the good thing is because we're in quarantine now, we can use every Friday to have a new webinar. And I have so many great people in my life, so many great ladies and gentlemen that um, um, do amazing things. And I, I really want to uh, use this time and space to help all of us, you know, and create new communities and networks and ideas, maybe. So thank you. Um, but most of you, pretty much all of you know me, so I don't really need to introduce myself, but so the topic of it, coming back to an opportunity to rise above challenges and, and create, you know, come up with new questions and create new opportunities, takes me to the new, uh, to the topic of our day today, which is the art of reinventing yourself amidst challenges and, uh, and adversity. So um, in a few minutes, I will introduce you to my two guest speakers that I, love so much uh, and I'm so proud to be in, in the world and I'm always so inspired by them and everything they've achieved. They are actually uh, the queens of reinvention. Hi, Desiree. They are the queens of reinvention and they really went above and beyond their um, present challenges um, to, uh, to create the thing that you'll be discovering today. Um, Candace and I have known each other for like 14, 15 years now. So I've been very much involved in her personal life and I know what she had to uh, conquer and overcome in order to be here today. So thank you and Alex, uh, I met you when you were um, going through your changes as well and I'm just so proud, but I'll get back to that. Just a little bit of me, I consider myself now uh, the master of reinvention. <laughs> uh, I had to reinvent myself so many times, a lot of times not by choice, <laughs> uh, but um, but the last time really because I had uh, I, I, I well I had no choice, but I also it was intentional. I had I, I wanted to renew myself, you know, and uh, so I'm you know I'm from Iran. I had to move to France when I was eight because of the war and the revolution. My parents got divorced. 
Most of my family went to the States when my mom and I went to Paris. Then 12 years later, I, my mom decided it was a great thing for me to move to LA and be with my friends and my family there and, and have a new opportunity. So I moved, uh, leaving everything behind once again. Then, you know, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty. We can ask questions afterwards. But um, then uh, I met my husband in 2007, he's Swiss. First thing he said was, I'll never move to Switzerland. You know, I love LA too much. I'm like, all right. Um, a year later, got hit by the, the crash, the financial crash. You know, I got laid off. Um, he was working for EA and his job um, got, uh, became obsolete. And so we're like, shit, what do we do? So he created a company in Buenos Aires. We moved to Buenos Aires, didn't work out. Then I was looking, you know, I uh, reached out, hi. I reached out to uh, all my friends and connections and I got a job in New York. And so we moved to New York. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Elif. Elif from Istanbul, everybody. Hi, Desiree. Um, uh, moved to New York, loved it, had the best time of my life. Three years into it, it's like, what do you think we moved to Switzerland? Okay, within two months we were here, I had to completely, like I knew nobody, he didn't know anybody, he didn't know the language, he didn't know anything. So really I had no choice but reinvent myself, otherwise we would have gotten into a divorce or something, I don't know. But So I used that time to do something I had no idea of, blogging, you know, I'm like, that's something I can do on my own, you know, it will be a little bit creative. I needed a creative outlet and I needed to also get to know Zurich from a different perspective, you know, than I would, because I always like to do things a little bit differently. So I started that blog with zero direction, zero knowledge, zero, uh, nothing, really nothing. But because I'm lucky that Switzerland is so small and uh, it was such a niche that I was able to actually kind of grow and make a little name for myself and, and do some really cool stuff. And so, but I didn't know how to write. I didn't know how to take pictures. I didn't know how to interview. I didn't know anything. I just did it, you know? And then three years ago, I decided that I wanted to pursue something that I had started years ago in LA. You know, I, I studied sociology and psychology and get into coaching. Again, having to reinvent myself completely um, because I had no choice. I needed to do something. I needed to wake up every morning with um, a purpose. I needed to... Um, do something that excited me and then I needed to just grow and um, everything I have done so far every step of it way has been outside of my comfort zone a hundred percent but every time that I do something that scares me once I get through it then I felt so empowered and I felt okay I didn't die and then the worst case I mean death is really the worst case scenario but once you're dead you're already dead so it doesn't really matter how badly you did it, right? But it's mostly the ego, it's the, the, the pride, it's the sense of failure, it's the sense of you know, being judged by others. These are the things that really stop us from trying new things. It's really not death, it's about the opinions of others. you know. And once you get past and understand that people are actually much more kind than we think they are, and we are our own worst enemies when it comes to that, um, it makes things a little bit easier. So, so that's been a little bit in a nutshell, my, my little story about my reinvention. Uh, but I don't want it to be all about me. Cuckoo, hi, Agnes. I want it to be about our guest speakers. So as I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, uh, thank you, um, Alex and Candice, for joining us today. Um, I'm so, so proud um, to know you both. Really, you inspire me every day. Um, and I tell you that all the time as well. Um, and side note, I get so excited when my people around me and everyone else does well, when I see people succeed and when I see them reach their goals and I see them smile and I see them really thrive, it makes me so happy, but it also inspires me. It makes me want to do more. Uh, so thank you because you're pushing me to do more. Uh, and, 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 and you give me that, uh, yeah, that platform to also, you know, follow you and then learn from whatever it is that you're doing. So um, um, I'll do, I'll start with by alphabetical order since Alex starts with an A. So there's no particular order, <laughs> but just the <laughs> alphabet. <laughs> so then we will don't also um, talk over each other. Cuckoo. <laughs> Morgan. So, 
Alex is, um, and she, you will get more into your, with your, your story, but because it's the, about the art of reinventing ourselves. A few years ago when I met Alex, when I first moved here to Zurich actually, so it was quite a, a while ago, okay. maybe six years ago at a friend's house, uh, she was a banker, you know, working for a big, big bank here in Switzerland. And I didn't know it back then, but she was not happy there. And then she was thinking of, uh, of leaving. But of course, you know, leaving behind a great salary, giving, leaving behind um, a comfortable job, you know, people maybe, you know, like would think that she's crazy and whatnot. So I think it took a lot of guts to be able to do that. Fast forward, um, now she has a thriving business called Eat by Alex. Um, and, uh, but I don't want to get into it because you will speak much better of it than I ever would. So, um, uh, so I'll let you introduce yourself. Side note, uh, both of them will introduce themselves and then I would really urge you to ask questions, you know, so you can write them in the chat room and then, uh, uh I'll do my best to, uh, to read and then so we can have this interaction together. The goal of this is to really inspire everyone, um, not to be afraid, inspire you, hi Avin, to inspire you to think bigger and just understand that, you know what, at the end of the day, what is the worst that could happen? Uh, right now we're all quarantined, so this is a perfect time to reinvent ourselves and try different things, why not, you know? And it's always fun to also wear a different hat. I have a couple of my students here and uh, I always tell them, you know, let's be like, let's bring out the alter ego, you know, and let's, uh, have fun with it and, and just, you know, um, let's just have fun with life, you know, because as we know, everything can change in a second. If we learn anything from this situation, how small we are uh, in, 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 a, in a really, you know, in, the, in, in big perspective, you know, mother nature comes, we can be all wiped out in a second, you know, so let's just make the most out of it. Having said that, Alex, welcome and, uh, Please introduce yourself and let us about, tell us about your reinvention and what it took and um, how difficult it was, you know, the, because we see the success story, but I want to know the green, nitty gritty and what mm -hmm. people said and all of it. Yeah. So good evening, good morning for some actually. Um, yes, I'm Alexandra Marmazou. So I'm, uh, like Ariane said, we met, I didn't know, six years ago. I was still in my job at UBS. Um, funnily, also Candice, we met, uh, we met during my reconversion from banker to cook to chef. <laughs> so we met in LA uh, by coincidence, but also because we knew you are Ariane. So it's quite funny because we, we study at the same culinary school. Um, yes, so uh, basically, I remember when I studied, like studying, I don't know, I just had this passion for finance and uh, for numbers, let's say more than finance per se. And I started my career at UBS. I was first in sales and uh, very quickly I had to change and that was for the best. So at the time it was a shock, but I lost my job. But they changed, moved me to Zurich, so I had to move to Zurich in 2009. And I became actually a trader then and uh, investment banking. So I was trading Swiss government bonds and I traded a repo, so it's also the product. Um, and um, basically, I had a very nice job in, in, fi in finance. It's probably one of the most interesting jobs. You come to work, you don't know what will happen to you. You don't know what the market will do. You don't know what your clients will do. So it's every day a huge challenge. So that kept me going for quite some time. So I did that job for almost 10 years. But already five years into the job, I was like, this is, I'm working with dinosaurs, I used to call them. Um, because they just, it was always doing the same. And for me, I was like, always want to bring something new, always want to use technology to grow. And I just felt so trapped in a way in that job, even though it was a very exciting job and I was recognized for what I did. And you said, obviously, there's the financial side, so you're well paid, but it's also the status, you have such a status. And that's what we learn as children is the money, the status, what other people think. Those are like how we, at least how I grew up with my family. 
So it was very difficult to realize that this is not enough for me uh, to, to be happy. And it took me quite some time to realize and understand. So I started side projects uh, with Fred, because I think we met through Fred, Ariane. Yes. Uh, we started this uh, Kunstkantine. It was called, so it was like a food and art in one place. And that was my first side project. And then I realized, okay, I really like doing other things. And anyway, my job continued. It was getting harder and harder. Uh, we were losing people in finance. So there was never fresh blood. And I was like, okay, now I need to leave. And I just said, okay, it took me actually six months to go to, do, to really do it, to quit my job. But I did it. And I was like, I have no idea of what I will do in the future. I don't know. But I trust myself, I trust my knowledge, I trust who I am, I believe in what I do. And even though it's so scary to jump, because basically it was like jumping into the unknown, this was the most beautiful experience of my whole life to do that. Because you're so comfortable in doing something and you're good at it, you're recognized, you're well paid, but jumping into this unknown was such a fantastic experience and i hope that maybe now due to corona due to many changes happening to our lives we are more um almost forced to challenge ourselves and to go into this unknown um circumstances where we don't know what will happen to us because that's when you're challenged and like okay now i need to come up with something <laughs> i need to do something and so for me, um, the way, so I, I left my job. First, I traveled a bit. Uh, my parents, I didn't even tell them that I'm going to quit. So I quit and then told them because five years before I tried to quit and I told my parents and they were like, oh, we could not sleep last night. You cannot leave your job. You have such a good job. Why would you leave your job? Stay, you will anyway fail in whatever you start. Yeah. And I was like, why are you telling me that? And you know what happened? I didn't quit my job. So I stayed longer. And that's why only basically five years later, I finally managed to say, okay, I'm not even going to tell my parents I'm going to quit. I'm just going to quit and then tell them. So it was a bit of a shock. And they're like, why would you do that? And my colleagues, I remember they're like, ah, yeah, it's good. You still have your husband to support you. And I was like, this is so unfair to tell me such things that basically i'm leaving because my husband can can support me financially i was like no it has nothing to do with that you're just jealous that you cannot leave and i can <laughs> so, <laughs> so from that time when people started to attack me on that topic and say oh anyway you have your husband to take care of you i decided my my way my how i will deal with that is that i will make them so jealous so instead of entering their game, I thought, okay, I'm going to make them so, so jealous. So I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going to travel and I'm waking up in the morning and studying. And it was the best thing you can do. So when people, because as soon as you decide to make a change and you have courage, people will attack you in a way and, and like try to make you feel bad because they feel bad. That's the problem because they're like, oh. It's so cool what she did. I will never be able to do that. So what do they do? They attack you and they judge you and they make you feel bad. So first thing, when this happens, just make them jealous. That's my first advice. <laughs> and um, yeah, so for me, like I said, I jumped into this unknown. I didn't know what will happen. So I started to explore a bit. Uh, what are the things that I like? And I realized I have time. I love studying. Let's study. And um so I did, I did a lot of online courses. I did an, a course on agri agriculture. I did a course um, on, what else did I do? Like on all sorts of courses, like online. It was amazing. It was such a beautiful time in my life that I had time to study again. And um, there's a point where I discovered, oh, but I really like cooking. And I remember at that time, I was like, I would love to spend some time in LA. And I discovered that culinary uh, course in LA so I was like perfect let's go to LA and study uh, plant-based food and I thought I could obviously go to Paris and study French cuisine but I was like no this this is this is passé 
<laughs> let's do the future. Let's do plant-based food, something which I've never experienced before. And especially it was not just plant-based, it was also raw food. So we did a lot of fermentation, uh, cooking bread without cooking because it was raw food. So it was really very interesting. And so that was in 2000. Uh, so I quit my job mid 2016. Then in 2017, I was back and forth in LA. In the what I did as well when I came back to Zurich, I started to test the market. So this is also one of my advice: is that it's difficult to know from the beginning what is your next step. But I think all of us we have great friends and people around us that that you can experience with and test whatever you want to do with them because probably it's a good starting point anyway, your community uh, or your friends. So that's what I did. So I did some pop-ups, uh, plant-based pop-ups uh, where I cooked a five course meal. I was very successful and people loved it, but I realized this is not what I want to do. So it was so interesting because I realized, okay, this is not something for me. This is not what I want to do. So I continued and I remember my parents were again, my mother was like, so what will you do? And I was like, I don't know. I just know that I have, I'm learning something interesting. Um, I know there's something to do in this field, but I cannot tell now exactly now what it is. I need time to explore and understand um, what it is. And it's exactly what happened. It took me a bit of time. I did my, I played with the market. I understood what's going on in Zurich. And then finally I had this idea of um, bringing healthy food ready-made and deliver it to my customers in Zurich. And that's what I started. And you know, when this idea came, the beauty of it was all the parts of my life, all the knowledge that I had and my skills, it all came together. I was like, Oh my God, this is so such an incredible fitting. It was like Tetris, you know, all the pieces came together. Like I could use my financial background because, you know, to build budgets and to understand all the numbers. I could use my creativity to cook food, uh, use color. I could use colors. I always loved painting. So I was like, suddenly I can do painting, but on a plate. Um, I suddenly had to learn to use accounting. I had to learn to uh lead a team uh so all these elements that suddenly came together to start my company uh eat by alex and um that's why i thought it's just looking back it was scary because the most difficult for me was honestly it was people judging me and questioning me and asking me to give answers because they were feeling like i don't know what they were feeling like my parents they were scared for me this was the most difficult. It was people keep questioning me. And I was like, guys, I'm already questioning myself all the time. I don't need you to also question me. I need you to tell me, hey, Alex, I know you will be fine. Um, whatever it is, just explore and you will find your ways. Trust yourself. So that's what I, again, can just say is that you need to learn to trust yourself. You need to learn to discover what are the things you're strong at and make maybe do a like a i recently did it um what's it called um like a big play how do you call that this uh what in french what is it no i don't know you know where you write okay i want to do that and a vision that. board a, vision, a board. vision board yeah so do your own vision board um discover a bit your areas uh, that you want to explore and understand and um so now where yeah. you at where are you at with eat by alex so where am i uh now it's been two years that i started the eat by alex um now i have actually uh three chefs and i have an office manager and marketing manager i have two freelancers working with me as well so i have quite a big team already um we own a really beautiful space that we call the eat by alex lab where we have the production kitchen where we do we used to do workshops and events obviously now they're a bit on pause but um it's pretty amazing what happened actually since i left ubs then i took a year pretty much for myself to explore 
who I am, what I like to do. Also just take the time to learn new things. And then it, in a few months, really the whole thing came together and I could start Eat by Alex. And now it's changing and evolving every day. And this is also the beauty of starting something. And you know, something that you asked before, Ariane, is that I think, or you said, is that yes, it's a risk to leave your job or let's say you even lost your job and start something new. But I, I think it's not taking a risk. It's actually a beautiful challenge to embrace. And even me, so I left my trading job and everyone says, oh, if you stop being in finance for a year, no one wants to hire you. No, that's not true. I think if I go back now to UBS or to many other banks and say, hey, uh, would you need me? And I'm sure I would find a job. So actually, or if not in finance, I would find maybe in even a better field. Like when I left, I also spent two weeks with a venture capital fund. And this was such a discovery for me. I was like, why was I at UBS for so long? Oh my God, such a boring place compared to so many other cool businesses like venture capital, which still has finance, but it's, they finance um, startups and obviously the people who bring fi who finance the startups probably were themselves entrepreneurs who are entrepreneurs so you're just in this entrepreneur world so there's so many opportunities and even if something doesn't work like let's say for me if eat by Alex doesn't work i think i had i've learned so much and i've seen so many gaps in the market that i can come up with another idea it would feel difficult for me to say, okay, I failed, but I see so many other possibilities and it opened my eyes in so many places that in the end, that's amazing. I'm just going to try something else. Yeah. It's going to be cool. At the end, thank you so much. At the end, I will come back to both of you and ask you how Corona has changed your business and how um, you're dealing with it. But isn't, it, isn't she so inspiring, inspiring, right, her story? I mean, in two years, how many people you have now working with you? It's incredible. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. And we'll get back to you. Um, oh, so Kathy here says, it's so funny because you used to work together between 2010 and 2014 for a big conference. <laughs> so you, Alex, and Kathy with the beautiful beach background. You guys you know, used to work together. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that this name rang a bell, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I don't world. know when we... Small world. Yeah. Well, thank you. Now, please uh, start asking your questions here. Jorgen says, congratulations, Alex. You're doing so wonderfully. So Candice, my love. So Candice and I, we met, I forget which year that was. Uh, 2005, 6? 2006. Four, okay. Yeah, something like this. We both were working in... Um, for a Brazilian fashion brand uh, in LA uh, called Colchi. And we were the headquarters for North America. And she was uh, in charge of the sales. And this beautiful young woman who was, and I was doing the marketing. And uh, we had so much fun. Back then she, you know, she was a single mom. Uh, she had her daughter very young. And now they look like sisters. I mean, it's, um, that's a one good thing. I think one of the good things about having kids when you're young, because then you kind of uh, look, you know, like sisters afterwards. Um, and uh, she was doing it all by herself. And uh, we won't get into the nitty gritty of the, the stories that now hindsight seemed a bit funny, but at the time they were not funny at all. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, so, but you know, and then uh, again, both of us got affected by the 2008 um, crash and everything just went upside down. But you know, I firmly believe that if you're in sales and as good as she is, um, she's great at sales, at networking, at people, you can literally sell sand at the beach. It doesn't matter. I mean, this is such a transferable skill that, uh, that you have, Candice, um, that you could do it with doing anything at all. But in the meantime, you know, she also had her journey. She had her ups and downs. She had, you know, had being a single mom. Um, then she got married and um, having to figure out her ways and not wanting to be in the fashion industry anymore because it's, you know, people, everyone looks at the fashion industry from the outside. And you know that, Catherine, right? Because you, you're fully in it. And you, Diana, too, as well. So, you know, fashion from the, from the outside, it looks so glamorous and so beautiful and fun, but... 
Let me tell you, the glamour part is maybe this little bit, and then the rest is just a lot of hard work and schlepping around and, you know, doing all that uh, stuff that no one else sees. So I think you were really burned out from it. And, um, and uh, it took you some time to, to find your way, but you finally did. And I want to now to hear your, your journey and uh, your internal dialogue and all the challenges that you had to uh, overcome and, and where you're at right now. Yes. Well, thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Um, and yeah, Ariane and I, it was like love at first sight. Um, it was a new position for me um, because at that time when I met Ariane, I knew I wanted to leave fashion, but I, it was probably like 10 years into my career about when I met you. And so I thought becoming a national sales manager of a very like fate, it was a very famous brand. You know, they had like Giselle Bouchen is like the spokesmodel and it was a pretty big deal. It was a big step up for me. And what I found out real quickly is I like to be at the forefront in sales and not behind telling everybody else what to do. But the most amazing part of that job was meeting Ariane, but it was definitely love at first sight and bonded over our, for our love of crackers and snacks <laughs> and doing yoga. She was like meditation to meditation. Um, you know, and a lot of people were talking about that. So if anything that came out of it. So at that time, I definitely was still trying to reinvent myself. Um, I tried to leave the fashion industry for a little bit after I left that job. And I had to come back real quickly because I was so good at it. I was very connected in the fashion world. And so I stayed for almost what another nine years. So I was in the fashion industry for close to two decades, about 18, 18, 19 years. And the last three years was absolutely the hardest for me to hang on. Um, I was dealing with um, some autoimmune issues. My body became super inflamed. Um, I lost my vision, almost all of my vision for about a couple of weeks. I was diagnosed with, you know, maybe having vertigo. And then I go to a neurologist and they told me, you know, I had to get basically a spinal tap, which is a long needle in your back. Like it was really scary. And I was diagnosed, you know, they said, you know, you had an attack on your brain. It was something where my eyes were bouncing the opposite way. And they basically said, that's like your first attack. So you should get on MS medication. So they believed it was multiple sclerosis. Got a second opinion. It was lupus. Third opinion, you know, it was RA. So I went with rheumatoid arthritis because I'm like, my fingers were inflamed. And the thing is, like, and I always say this, you can eat all of the kale in the world, sleep eight to nine hours a night work out and still get ill like I did. And the reason why it's from stress, like that's literally, I had so much stress. It's so much on my plate. I was a young mom being in the fashion industry. There's so much on your plate. Like you, you know, I would sell over a million dollars, a couple million dollars for a company. And instead of saying, thank you, they're like, well, where's the next million? It's never good enough. You have to look perfect at all times, you know, and I was running around in high heels, lip gloss on, looking perfect at all times. And meanwhile, on the inside was literally falling apart. I felt like inflamed and tired and I knew something was really off. I went on the, um, the RA medication for about a year and it didn't work. I was getting worse. They wanted to put me on cancer medication and you don't tell a woman that, you know, Hey, you might lose some of your hair because God forbid, like I'm trying to keep it and I want it fuller. In fact, and something within me, it was in that moment that I clicked. I said, I'm not taking anything more. I'm getting to the root of this. And I'm going to, sometimes you have to take your health and well being into your own hands. And so that's what I did. I walked out of the doctor's office and thought, okay, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I started to go back to my meditation. Um, I started to go back to my spirituality. I had gotten so far from it. The fashion world, you know, it's you play hard, you work hard. I drank a lot of alcohol. I wouldn't eat enough fats. I wouldn't even eat enough food. And I would just work like crazy, then work out like crazy. And so that kind of went on, you know, for years. Um, and so I got back to myself. I started to breathe and get connected to myself. And I saw, and I felt in that moment, the first time that I meditated for the first time in like a few years, I felt like I was suffocating. And I saw myself in like this dark hole looking up at like, wow, like I got myself in here. I've got to get myself back. So I spent the last two years of my industry just really trying to get back to myself, 
I took on workout brands because I'm like, oh, well, that's like a happier thing. You know, I had my own showroom in downtown Los Angeles and I did wholesale. So I sold to boutiques and stores all over the world. Um, so I tried to reinvent myself while being in that industry. In fact, like I just kept trying and trying and trying and my health and well-being was just collapsing, like more for my mentality. Like I was crying all the time. Anyone that knows me, I'm a very happy person. And it was really starting to scare me. Um, the inflammation wasn't going away. Um, and it got to the point where I just walked away. I closed down my doors. It was very similar Alex story to myself. People thought I was nuts because they're like, well, are you sure you just don't need a vacation because you're so, you know, quote unquote successful, you know, like you've worked really hard to get to this point. You have all like the best brands and you know, everyone, and you know, you're making all this money. And I just thought I would rather like start a taco stand on my street corner and sell vegan tacos. Like it was that bad. I was having visions of working at a taco shop. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but it's just, I, I just wanted out so bad. So I finally closed down my showroom, fired all my brands, fired my employees. It took about 10 months. It took some time to do that. But I remember that day that I was finally done with my last brand and I told them I'm done. Um, I remember just sitting there feeling I just felt so crazy, but yet so alive. Like I had been released from this like fashion prison that I had been in. <laughs> and it's like, what do I do now? Like, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Like I get asked that a lot. Well, I want to do something different. And it's true. Like Alex had said it, you have to start listening to yourself. You have to start trusting yourself. And so I signed up for Toastmasters because I wanted to do public speaking. And I knew that, like, I was scared shitless. I was like, I'm going to start doing all the things that I never did before. And, you know, because I had dealt with this, this dialogue, this internal dialogue, a lot of us have where it's like, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. And I'm like, bullshit, I'm not living like this anymore. Like I, there is something more inspiring for me and inspiring life to live. And I always saw myself going out and inspiring others and speaking and doing something creative. And so I started doing Toastmasters, which is across the world. So if that's something that, you know, maybe for you, you want to get better in even just speaking to people, if you're a shy person, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Um, and you meet so many amazing, interesting people. So that really helped me sort of get comfortable with speaking and just like speaking from my heart. Then I started going to women's circles and like meeting up and, you know, kind of talking with them, like, well, what do you guys do? Then I brought back my creativity. I decided that my inspiration was my 18 year old self. And it sounds funny, but you know what? She was super cool and rad. Like she was designing her own clothes. She was doing poetry and she was fun and I was always creative. I was always an artist. And I realized being a young single mom, you know, just hustling every single day of my life, like I lost that part. I was like, do I even, am I even creative anymore? Like I yearn for that. So I went back to nutrition school, um, became a holistic health coach because I'd always been into like health and well being. And then I went to culinary school to bring back that creative part. And that was really where it just started kind of like opening up. Like I just started expanding and getting creative and all these ideas were coming to me. And I, I still didn't really know what I was going to do. So basically towards the end of my culinary school, in order to graduate, you have to like come up with your own brand and present it to class. And so that's what I did. Um, I came up with, I started to get into chocolate. So it's really funny. I went from fashion to chocolate and anyone that knows me knows that chocolate wasn't even, I didn't even like it. Like I was a weird kid into like pineapple upside down cake and like, you know, things like that. Um, but I started to crave chocolate. Um, I was working with an integrative doctor as well during nutrition school to get to this root of this health issue. So I went sugar free and added adaptogens and collagen. And that's when I got into chocolate. And it's funny because chocolate does have a lot of magnesium. It's a very grounding superfood, although it's like very energizing, but grounding. And that was like one of the biggest lessons I had to learn is just like to start grounding my energy because I'm very type A, I'm very like, woo, like I get really burned out. And I've had to learn to just sort of like slow it down, take deep breaths. And it's it, now I see why I was so you know attracted to chocolate. Like it really did make me feel better. 
but there was no good clean chocolate in the market. I mean, everything had like, you know, all these chemicals or just like really bad fillers that was just going to inflame me more or it just tasted really gross. So I decided I am going to create a chocolate brand and add all these like superfoods, like adaptogens and collagen that has helped me. And I also want to make it beautiful. I got inspired by Parisian soap boxes. Um, and I, I like anything kind of vintagey and feminine, but yet with like a modern twist. And so I presented, it just like flew through me. Like it just like flowed through me. Like I designed my brand, I think like within 10 minutes, I was like, it's called beauty bar chocolate. It's sugar free. It has adaptogens and collagen. And it looks just like this created it, designed it. I presented it to class. Everyone freaked out. They were like, this is so delicious. So I graduated culinary school and I sat with myself like, okay, do I go the route of launching a cookbook? Because I really was into that. Or do I do this chocolate brand? And it really kept coming to me in these meditations where I just, again, you have to trust yourself as Alex was saying. And I kept seeing chocolate and all these doors opening in my mind. And, you know, at the time, of course, you have people that are scared for you because they're scared for themselves. And for me, I've gone the opposite my whole life. I had my daughter at 19 and everyone told me I would never make it in fashion. And here I, you know, worked in it for almost two decades and I killed it. So it's like, I can do this again. And so I launched Beauty Bar Chocolate about two years and a few months ago. It was about the scariest thing ever because it was really like putting my whole self out to the world, my heart, mind, body, soul. Like it was, this was, this is who I am. And if someone denies it, then they're denying me and that's going to really hurt. Right. And I, I really did actually have like, right off the bat, I started getting into magazines and on podcasts and like all these doors just started opening for me. I got featured in Forbes magazine. Um, last year and I've been asked to like speak at all these events like everything just started to come together I mean it wasn't like it just happened it was a lot of work um, to even figure out the packaging I mean I knew nothing about food like how do you get this box made that's in your brain right so I had to really like get creative and google and ask people and just like I had a lot of bad looking packages to start with a lot of tears and you know my my first bars of chocolate didn't come out so well and you know it's just all like I just started to learn to trust myself and every time I failed I'm like okay it's one step closer to getting it right and th through this whole process I, I mean it's been the scariest thing but I'll say this I was able to reverse all the issues I was having and it wasn't until I started to really start speaking from my heart did I start to heal. It wasn't the foods I was eating. It was me going out and living my life. And it has been so scary. I have, there's been so many moments where I'm like, I can't do that. But I'm like, I force myself because after I'm done, it's, I feel amazing and I'm so proud of myself. And I've healed leaps and bounds within myself. And so my brand is my story. My brand is more than chocolate. It's about bringing an inner peace and beauty from within. And I get to teach others to just like take a moment, take a breath for yourself, enjoy a square of chocolate, you know, and just sort of a reminder for that because we're all on the fast forward button and a lot of us are dealing with these issues. And so I feel really happy somehow I've put one foot in front of the other and I've winded up where I'm at right now. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, truly. So, I mean, that's basically all of it in a nutshell. <laughs> I can't hear you. Thank you. I was muted. Okay. Okay. I was like, I, I thought for a moment, what if I've been muted this whole time? <laughs> no, no, I muted myself just in case. Yeah. Sorry. So I was yeah. saying, is, I mean, aren't these two ladies so inspiring, right? I mean, and again, they're not trying to pretend like everything is busy breezy all day long yeah. and uh, yeah. there are no rocks along the way and no stumbles and falling. But every time you fall, you get yourself back up because what is the other recourse, right? If the pain of being in where you are right now is greater than the joy that you would feel from being somewhere else, then that means you have to move away. Does that make sense? If it's too painful to be where you are, <laughs> So that means that you got to get out. Um, and it was so painful for me. It came out in 
like mm -hmm. inflammation, anxiety. I mean, I was crying all the time and it's true. We hold emotions mm -hmm. and you have to get it out. You have to, you have no other recourse, right? Yeah. So it is not easy. Uh, it is not a straight road. Um, it is not uh, an obvious uh, win either. You know, I mean, there are risks attached. I mean, you have to try several things and see what works and what doesn't. But I think that the, the payback from it is that you grow so much from the process of it. And I always say, you know, rather than focusing on the end result, let's enjoy the process. Because I think we go from goal to goal to goal and we never really appreciate what it takes us to get to that point. And then so we never um, award our, ourselves gifts, you know? We don't uh, sit down and appreciate all the things that we've learned from it, you know? Whether it was positive or not, it's always a learning. Um, and I think it's, uh, for me to, to know both of you has been such a um, inspiration. And, and both of you, and that's where I wanna get to um, in terms of also um, Corona and what it has done to your businesses, but also how you've been actually using social media, because I think this is, that's, that's actually where you get pretty much your business, right? Your face and, and being in, in that space. So can you um, tell me, um, maybe Candace, since we're on your right yeah. now? So I definitely, that was something when I, I originally really built up, I worked hard building up my social media. I have, um, a blog on um, Instagram called A Whole and Happy Life. And I really built that up. So when I launched Beauty Bar Chocolate, everybody trusted me. So they went over and they're like, I want to buy, you know, this chocolate that you're making. It sounds incredible. And so during this COVID time, I, well, last month I had one of the best months in business. You know, it's February, it's a month of love. And I really, you know, I have four bars now and starting to get in this role. I was, I've been opening all these wholesale accounts and my retail was like starting to really like thrive. And I was actually getting ready to start meeting investors because I'm at a point now where I've grown it as far as I can go. And I need help. There are some days where I'm like, I need help. Like I'm putting so much pressure on myself. Um, and so I do have an assistant and, you know, but again, I've been self-funding, so I've got to be creative. I have my own kitchen now in downtown Los Angeles, which is an exciting thing. And so things were really going well last month until about three weeks ago where everything sort of came to a halt and my sales were, have been getting way down. And um, so I got creative and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do parts of my business that I've been wanting to do. And the parts of it are really just, I haven't been showing my face on social as much because I'm in my kitchen producing, I'm at events speaking. So I'm, again, in a sense, I'm reinventing and just, you know, I'm putting myself out there in more and more of an authentic way. And so I've been doing all these lives. Um, I have set up all these live wellness events on Beauty Bar Chocolates. I wanna be a, a space for people to come and feel a sense of peace. Like maybe they haven't tried a meditation. So I had a live meditation yesterday. This evening, um, one of my girlfriends who was on Top Chef is doing a, a mug cake with my chocolate. She's having a live cooking show. Monday morning, I have a yoga girl. So you guys are welcome to come over. It's all free. You know, it's 24 hours. I know I'm in Los Angeles, so you can watch it. So I've got over three and a half weeks worth of incredible things. I have a live Reiki session that's gonna be happening, um, different workouts, um, but I just figured I wanna do something that's positive and uplifting. Also being in the forefront of people's minds, right? Like I obviously don't wanna fall down where I, I'm, if, if you're not, if you do have a business right now, I think it's more important to show yourself more now than ever and try to be a resource that is positive for people. and. It's also getting me out of my comfort zone because, you know, doing videos and being, you know, live, it is uncomfortable, but I thought I wanted to do this, mine as well. And the feedback has been amazing. Um, doing Zoom calls like this, I've been part of a lot of happy hours. I'm meeting all kinds of new women. And, you know, I've actually, I've, and as of this morning, I've had a really good week with business. And I think it's helping just putting myself out there in a more vulnerable way and just really connecting and just getting creative in that way. And I'm not making it like I have to do this so I get sales. I'm doing it because it's from my heart and it just makes me happy to help others. And in return, you know, I have been getting orders, which is, I mean, we'll see how it goes, but I feel happy. 
And I also just found out I'm getting into the most prestige department store in Hong Kong this morning. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's exciting. And then I also found out I'm getting into another um, company that I've been trying to get into. So I do think there is some business out there to be had. And maybe in a few weeks, people will also kind of, you know, not everyone's lost their job. A lot of people still are making money. And I do have a product that does help your community, helps you feel better. So I do feel like there's, there's business out there for me. So I haven't lost hope at all. Um, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of a pause for myself as well, because I think that's important. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Just as an FYI, are you, are you okay with running over a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, if you have I to can go, go as long. long. No, okay. I can go okay. as long as okay. we need to. Yeah. And then we'll get to Alex and then I'll go through the, some of the yeah. questions that we have here. Thank you so much, Candice. How about you, Alex? How has uh, COVID been affecting you and what are you doing on social media and whatnot? Um, so I think on my side, initially, there was a kind of fear reaction. So people obviously had less bookings and because it's like people are like, oh, what's happening? What should I do? I don't know how to react to what's going on and it's food, what I do. So maybe also there was a bit of a fear from people that maybe there's also COVID in food. Um, so for me, what I decided to do, it was to stop the business for a week, which was a big decision because this year I had decided to not stop the business a single week and run it really all the time with or not, with or not enough customers to always run it. But this time I just thought it's time to take a break, um, pick all our brains. We have five we are five in the team so let's all sit together think about it uh, come up with new ideas um, and what we did we sent a, a survey to our customers it's a bit like candy said is like how to make your customer feel that you are still there you're listening to them and try to answer to what they need right now and so that's what we try to do is a survey so we we got a lot of I mean, the feedback I got, I, I would have never got it before. So it was really amazing to do that. I had such honest feedback. And there were many things that I kind of knew were not help, not so good for us. And now I really had it on black and white on paper. So it was really interesting. And it, it made that for us, we, so for me initially, I also did a lot of Instagram. I started to post a lot of videos of me cooking and now... I installed like a camera on top of my uh, my stove, so I'm gonna start to do live cooking shows. Um, so that's to help also people to start cooking at home and not be like stuck, not knowing what to do. So I also try to help people cook and then try with the company to each to create products that people want. So that's what we have done on our side and so we are back since this week and we had actually when I look back you know I always forget to look back but actually we had a really amazing week I have to say I mean you know you always want more but uh, we launched a product which is a weekly so it's a weekly lunch pack so every day you receive just a lunch and it's been so successful. I, yeah, I cannot believe it. it. It really went so well. And a lot of bookings every day. Less, obviously, I can on tell my you main why. product. I can tell you why. Yeah. I'm so done with cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so I'm hoping. This I'm hoping to hear. Morning, for. lunch, dinner. I'm like, yeah. oh, I just want to get out. <laughs> yeah, and also I hope, I think it was really tough for us now until now because people didn't know what to do. They also, everyone started to cook more at home. But even me, after being one week at home cooking three times a day, me as a chef who loves doing it, at a point, I was like, at a certain point, I was like, okay, now I'm going to order from other cool chefs. Everyone is delivering their food. So let's order from other cool restaurants. And I thought, if I am like that, hopefully <laughs> other people will feel like that and they will come to us. And uh, let's put in place the safety and hygiene measures. Let's come up with new products. And with all of that, we hope to capture and to help basically people uh, to feed people with good and healthy food and happy food and love food. 
And let me tell you, both your food and your chocolate are just delicious. So the ones, you know, you can order chocolate on, on your website, Candice, right? And you deliver yeah. worldwide. Absolutely. And then Alex, you can just go on her site and, 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 and check out her, uh, her, uh, her delicious um, dishes that she offers. And if not ordered, they can we have a lot of recipes on my website. That, that's true, which I'm going to actually look for, for this weekend. So thank you. So now I'm going to go over the, the comments, if you will, and, uh, and some questions. So first of all, um, okay, so now this is time for the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> From Anne, you two are so inspiring. I've been in dentistry for 30 plus years, suffer from RSI, and have recently started my own business in interior design, my passion hobby. You're both exactly who I needed to hear. Thank you both so oh. much. Um, Elise says, couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for sharing. And then you said, uh, do you, uh, at the end, you also said something else, Ali. We should all keep in touch and evolve them more than ever. We're all in this together. Yes, we're all in this together. So you tell me if you want to be in touch and I will definitely gladly connect you all. I mean, maybe if someone has a specific question on how to change or... Yes, and that's, I'm going through the comments and then I'm going to go to the uh, questions. So from Sandria. Alex, uh, you, have, you seem to have such very uh, varied skills and strengths. How did you decide which business to run with? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I think it's like I said before, I think for me in the end, um, I realized that food was something that I was even more passionate about. So food and nutrition, health, uh, I was always like into my salads. I was always looking to the last trend. So somehow it was very interesting. And I remember also coming from banking, I had this urge to use my hands, <laughs> like to do much more instead of like trading, which is, what is it? Like I wanted to do something with my hands. Uh, so for me, food came really quite immediately to me as a skill, like uh, let's use that skill. And like I said, I created a business that actually uses all my skills. And if you manage to do that, which I think in a way, that's how we create new, really beautiful and interesting startups is by using our skills and combining them in a certain way. And that's what makes you create a new startup. So I would say, just try to use as many of your skills as you can with obviously finding one major that you you follow great um thank you um then crystal um in the meantime you get a lot of compliments all my respect admiration Graciela here she's one of your clients she loves your food <laughs> you again thank you so much for these wonderful stories and the success coming out once we follow our hearts desires um they all I, like i'm so thankful fantastic both of you candace and, and alex so you're inspiring a lot of people right now. So Crystal's question is, I wanted to ask you which tools helped you to define your strength and your general strategy as an entrepreneur? What helped you to build inner strength? This question goes to both of you. Um, I would say it's been several things. I am a huge believer in therapy and I, I've gone to therapy off and on in my life, but I actually went back after I left the fashion industry because I was dealing with, you know, like a lot of us do, I've dealt with low self-esteem most of my life and it's been something, you know, internally. And so going to therapy has been really helpful for me and then putting it into action, like going to, like I was saying earlier, the Toastmasters really built my confidence with speaking and just pushing myself, you know, and putting myself out there really, um, helped gain that confidence and just believing in myself and not listening to kind of like just taking out everything from the outside and just listening to what it is that you want. Um, because unfortunately other people sometimes can be negative and, um, but listen to what it is that is in your heart and your soul and do it, just go out and do it and push yourself and that you will gain confidence just from that. And things will start to unfold and ravel in front of you. And I mean, that's been true for me. Um, and you, Alex? Uh, I think it's a bit similar to, to Candice. Um, 
for me, I remember the first thing I did when I was still at UBS, I knew that I was leaving, but I, I uh, went to see a coach. Um, because even though I knew myself, I still had places where I was wondering, what are my strengths? Let's, let's, like, I really enjoyed uh, doing that coaching session with, uh, with the person and we went back to childhood. We went into many topics and I remember, it's funny because at that time I was not at all thinking of food. She said, one of her conclusion was, oh, um, Alex, if you open a restaurant, you will not just do a restaurant, you will do a chain. And I was like, oh, interesting. And it's so true. Like, I would never stop with a small thing. I want to grow. It's like, it's so in my heart. I could never. So I think it's important to hire, uh, to work with people that can help you better understand yourself. And one of my things this year is to uh, work with different coaches to improve different aspects of my communication, of um, um, with my employees. I don't know. So just using other people to better understand myself so this is a very very important part and like i said it's just trusting yourself don't letting others influence you we so need to ignore what people tell us they're just jealous in the end because they don't have the courage to do it so never listen to negative feed like to people who are bringing negativity one of my decisions was actually to stop surround myself to not surround myself with anyone which is who is negative so only positive people if someone is negative bye bye yep. i have nothing to do with you and this has been so beautiful yeah oh yeah and i would say too like for the strength thing um i want to touch on that usually we know what we're good at and i think just being honest about it like i know that i'm an amazing networker and i can go to a party and just be friends with everyone by the time I leave. And I know not a lot of people have that skill, but I really suck with the back end. I'll be honest. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. So trying to find and hire other people who, you know, find people who are good at that to hire them, to bring them on. Um, and obviously I can't hire too many people um, because I'm a smaller company now, but I get creative. Like I'm just, just being honest with what your strengths and weaknesses are. And maybe you can build on those weaknesses, but if they're just things that you're really not good at, I say, you know, hire the people that are or have friends around you that are good at it that will support you in that. Um, it's just sort of a balance is what I have found. Great. Thank you. Yeah, very good point. Mm -hmm. That's why we have, you know, we, we can only do so much from our own point of view, right? So we, we need other people just to expand our horizon and, and, and grow. You cannot do it alone all the time. So Elif, um, she asks, would you say we have to overcome our, f our fears first in order to start creating again? I don't think you can ever, like, you just have to go through it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's the same thing. Your fear, you're going to always have that fear there. Yeah. Um, it just becomes smaller. And, you know, every time I get, get up on a stage or I speak or I put myself out there, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And I just push through. And so the fear does start to diminish. And it starts becoming, I feel like sometimes my fear maybe might be just excitement. Sometimes excitement is fear, you know, where it feels that like it's kind of similar. So you can look at it as like you're excited as well to expand. Mm -hmm. We need it, right? You need a little bit of yeah. that. But I don't yeah. think the fear will ever go away because as, as you try new things, of yeah. course, you challenge you yourself. You want to live like that. It's yeah. more interesting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes though, I'm like, why am I doing this thing? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you can take a break and have a day off. Of course, you don't always need to be brave. <laughs> exactly. How about you? And you, you, Ahian, I remember once we were at the body together, and you said, <laughs> you said, Alex, you know what? We should always say yes to somewhere, something we want to say no to. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. I always and say I yes, and I say that three seconds much. later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the moment and you say yes i mean that's it you can't take it back and then <laughs> and it's like okay now i have to do it i mean this have done that a lot and obviously sometimes it has been very good and sometimes it was a it was a good experience anyway let's say learning a lot through that to you challenge can. yourself it's uh and to be honest if you don't a person at least i need challenge i need to always be challenged to to, to thrive and grow, let's say. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to stay in your comfort zone. Um, 
and uh, but not be happy because the, the, you know even if we're unhappy that's what we know and we figure out how to manage it and live and navigate it but yet we're not so happy but it's easier to stay in that state because you've already figured it out than having to jump into something unto the unknown you know but uh, mm -hmm. it's doable so I think maybe yes. can I just add one yes. point I think because I'm thinking again of someone who wants to move and do something different I think you just need to write down for yourself what are the risks and but what are the rewards just make a list what worse can happen to me um and maybe by seeing it on paper it helps you to overcome those fears because they are fears in in, in a way and just writing them down and maybe it gives you more courage to to move yeah towards. and of course the financial aspect also is um is uh it could be a deterrent so what I say, you know, sometimes you can, as you have your job that brings the, pays the bills, maybe you can spend extra hours and work on your, on your dream, you know, not leave everything, but then you have to just dedicate to be tired, you know, like dedicate some hours, but then, then at least you feel safe while building your, your business. So mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people don't dare to leave because they have bills to pay, but you can start doing everything, you know, together. Um, it, it, it will take maybe longer, but it is possible. So there are tricks, you know, like make it work for you and not you work for it. Uh, and, and try to look at creative ways of, of using that, uh, whatever you have, you know, as a, as a tool, as an, and as a, as a means to an end. Um, yes, Candice, I feel like- And I wanted, to, I wanted to piggyback on that. I'm actually looking right here at my, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in the power of, you know, manif I, I'm in all about manifestation and the power of your words and just your belief. I, I'm really into vision boards. I used to never be into them. They actually work. I'm telling you, I think there's something about looking at something every day that somehow it comes into your life. And I just did a new one. Um, and all over it is like, breathe deep, like simplify your life, speak and like meditate. And here I am now, you know, in a quarantine, I mean, right. I'm like, I somehow manifest this peacefulness. Um, but really, I mean, it's, it might get some, get you flowing too. Like just put pretty pictures on there and sayings and words, anything that inspires you. I mean, we all have time right now and you can even print it up. If you don't have, um, you know, magazine, just print it up from your computer and just put anything on there. I mean, if you want, you know, money, or if you want, you know, calmness, like put it all on there, like whatever it is, it really is a cool thing to do. I just wanted to recommend that. I agree. I love looking at mine. It's so colorful. It just makes me feel yeah. good, you know? Yeah. Um, Christina, to both of you, who was your biggest, are we okay with time again? L let me know, anyone who has to know. Yeah. Um, who was your biggest supporter? Uh, was there a moment you were about to give up? And if yes, how did you bounce back? <laughs> <laughs> so many times I have wanted to give up so many times, especially when I couldn't get it right. I'm a perfectionist. And through this process, I've had to learn to breathe. Um, it's been emails that I get almost daily from people, quite honestly, saying your chocolates changed my life. Um, thank you so much. And thank you so much for everything. And, you know, people just go going on and on about how much they love it. And I think well, gosh, that like keeps me going. Like, this is what I wanted. Like I wanted to help keep others. And my biggest supporter I would say is my husband because I mean, he's the one who, you know, supported me to leave my career and for us to, you know, basically take a step back because I didn't have, you know, a job and everything was put on him, you know, to pay the bills and things like that as I was building my brand. Um, and so, and to this day, he's my number one supporter. Um, although I have a group full of girlfriends that support me, but definitely I would say, you know, that's been nice to have. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's. Yeah, you Alex? Yeah, on my side, I think um, my friends and my community, um, but always giving feedback and being there and, you know, did this made me continue because at the beginning you you have nothing you know you start from nothing this you have zero clients you don't have you have nothing and just having your friends or because for me this was the way i started i started with my inner circle and they tell told their friends who told their friends and that's how i grew and i think this is something 
we should all look into. We have such a great network. And this is a, a great start for us. So that's what I did. And for me, they were my biggest supporters. So I thank all my friends and people that helped me at the beginning um, and believed in me and gave me feedback to continue. Uh, like I said, my family was not very supportive. And I even have a, I had a chat at Christmas with my father. And he was like, I don't like food. I don't like you were so much better in banking. And I'm like, oh my God, how can you still say that? This is so disappointing. I was so sad. I'm still, and he still didn't say anything about it. He remained on that. So my family was never very supportive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in the end, you know, you don't choose your family, you choose your friends. <laughs> so for me, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the people who are positive and support me. Exactly. I have to agree. I agree with you, Alex. That has been my biggest is the collaborations with women in my industry has when more women come together is when you can be more successful. And I always call them, I'm like, you're all my little chocolate pimps. Like they go out and they talk about my brand online. And because of that, that's really helped me grow. So definitely put yourself out there and collaborate with other brands. I do it daily. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, collaboration. That's a very good topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do a lot with collaboration. Um, this is really big for me, so I completely agree. Good. So I think we don't have any more questions, but we have comments. So from Christina, so inspiring. Thank you for answering the family of the heart and soul. Uh, hold on. Uh, super inspiring and interesting to hear from zero to hero. Thank you so much for sharing and also to the awesome host. For organizing these stories, thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> uh, from, uh, hold on, I have Anne had to go, but she's so thankful for, to have heard your stories. Bravo. Um, and uh, hold on, I'm missing because there's so many. Everybody, Adina, I know I saw you, Adina. Where did you go? She basically, she said it's given her goosebumps. Yeah, your stories keep on giving me goosebumps. Thank you for sharing and for inspiring us. Um, there's a last one uh -huh, from Crystal again. Uh, what would you recommend to do if you're short of funds as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Most investors only enter if you have already built up the basic foundations. Good question. I mean, it depends on what kind of business you're, you're going to be doing. Um, so I'm not sure. It's, I mean, there's a lot of creative ways that you can do it. Obviously you know, try to self fund. I mean, that's, I've gotten creative because I've reached out to friends that, you know, someone's good with a website and Hey, would you be willing to do this at a, you know, I have a lot of friends that have done it at half the rate. Um, and I give them free chocolate and I actually have had a lot of people just ultimately just want to help me. And that's helped me because I don't have all this money to, you know, sock in. And because I was in the fashion industry, I had Ariane knows we have this amazing photographer friend who, you know, he's make, he makes a lot of money doing that, but he charged me next to nothing. So I would say to get creative with your community to ask for help. You could start like a, um, like a fund me type thing where you go out with family um, and get funds from family. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what kind of uh, company that you're talking about building. Alex. Oh, I don't want to hear your name. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> what was the question? So I was well, answering. How, how would you, you know, how, uh, what would you recommend to do if you're short on funds as an Yeah, this is a, uh, um, this is very, like, I've never had that myself so far. Um, but I think because I heard what Candice uh, said, I guess it's being a bit creative again and finding help yeah with your friends your family exchanging like i did a lot of exchange so initially the person who helped me was marketing she will help me with marketing and against i will send her food um i will so i'll do a lot of exchange uh like back in the days to survive and get skills from other people so that has been very good for me um yeah this is a challenging question i guess you can always ask friends and family for funding but i also heard it can get a bit tricky at times because then you have to 
they have questions and they put pressure on you. So you also, I think crowdfunding is a very good idea because it's also a good way to test what you're doing. So is my company really something the market needs? So with the crowdfunding, I think you, you get some financial support and it's, it's still, you know, you don't have to respond to anyone's demand. And at the same time, you get to test your, your product. And I would come up with a good business plan as well, just to try to figure out what it is that you need and just get clear on it. But if, because my whole thing is, I'm like, if there's a well, there's a way. I mean, I was 19 when I had my daughter and I put myself through college and I figured out a way to get a loan. That is another option. You could get a business loan, um, you know, especially right now with like everything being at low rates. I mean, there is always, there is always a way you can figure it out. It might grow slower. That's, I've built my brand so slow because of, you know, self-funding, but there's the beauty in that is that I know every bit in part of my own business and because I've been doing it from the ground up and so when I do grow and expand it's going to succeed you know because sometimes you don't want to grow too fast it's 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 also a good thing mm -hmm. I think Elif that's probably helpful for you right because that's where you're at <laughs> Elif is starting a, a bathing suit I mean she already has it but she's uh, changing a little bit her direction right um, so yes yeah, so I think we're coming to a, a close uh, Thank you everyone for showing up on your Friday evening of uh, not doing anything. <laughs> That's, I think it's the first time ever that, that everybody yeah, kind of I'm, I'm, ready for some, I'm ready for some wine. It's only 11.30 a.m. in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. I see somebody with wine. I'm like, huh, is it well, too early? <laughs> it's 7.30 our time. So because you're on the zoo, on Switzerland time right now, like, and on London time and Istanbul time, and that's yeah, maybe time, time. this is one o'clock time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are no rules today, you know? The, yeah. the quarantine rules are like made of rules. <laughs> So, but thank you, Candace, for joining us from sunny I love you. I love you, I love you so, nice so much. All of you. I can't wait to be part of more of these. I, yes, I just love, I love yes. being your energy. You always make oh. me happy. Yeah, I will do. I will send a recording to everyone. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. I love everything you do. I, I you know, like seriously, love everything about both of you. I'm so inspired and excited, and I'm sure that you, from what I see here, um, it sounds like you inspired everyone here so please let me know if um you want to connect with anyone you know where to find me i will send the video recording and then next week we'll have another special guest uh my friend sandra alex is too uh we, you know they work a lot together she's a nutritionist and she will help us uh, navigate uh, the nutrition part of uh COVID and uh, maybe not gain too much weight while we're always home eating and cooking. So, <laughs> and so I will try to do things every week, um, you know, as long as we are here and uh, whomever wants to show up to the party, please welcome. Thank you again, Flati. Um, thank you so much. Yes. So uh, you can see her uh, beauty bar chocolate and whole and happy life. And then also Alex, if you want to add your, your yeah. website. So, yeah. And what I wanted to add as well quickly is if anyone has wants to talk to me and has more questions and wants to, I don't know, tell me, go through their business idea, they can reach out to me and I'll make some time for it. Because uh, we do have an experience, I do have an experience um, of how it went for me and I'm sure I can guide a bit uh, others. So feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Here. Feel, free, feel free to reach out. I'm here to support you in any way because I, I know how it is. And really, I really recommend you, those who want to see a little bit how social media is done. I mean, both of them are really, really uh, involved and they do a lot, I have to tell you. So I think uh, I always go there to try to get, but I can't. It's, you know, it's very hard for me to get past my own uh, limiting beliefs. But um, but uh, they're really good at it. So you can really learn from what they're doing. And uh, yeah, Candice, please send us also all the cool things that are happening that maybe we can join. Yeah. It's, over yoga at, and, yeah, yeah. it's over at Beauty Bar Chocolate on Instagram uh, okay. at 5 p.m. today, which would be your morning tomorrow. But I'm gonna have 
um, my girl, my chef girlfriend, she's going to be cooking, um, have a cooking class. And next week I've got an entire week filled. So I, I'm sharing it too. Like all the sessions and everything are on okay. my post and everything like that. Awesome. So, over awesome. And say hi. Yes. Thank you. So thank you. Lovely ladies. Have a good night. Thank you. Love you all. Thank Bye. you for joining. Bye. Bisous. 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 <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you, Ariane. Thank you. <laughs> My favorite way to be without fear is in the